Coming up on Techzilla, charge your iPod or camcorder with a honking 12 volt battery. Huh? We'll turn you into a professional videographer in five minutes. It's not Apple TV, but don't worry, it's much better. All that and more in our very first episode of Techzilla, which is brought to you by Netflix, GoDaddy.com, and the wild jackasses of the Earth's nether regions. <laughs> Hey, I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Jessica Corbin. Welcome to the very first, the inaugural? The first, the premiere. The premiere, I like that. The premiere edition of Techzilla, the latest tech show from Rev3. You like technology? I love technology. Do you like, like technology for technology's sake? Well, you and I actually tackle technology in very different ways. I mean, you, you're, you are an every, you know, an every man, if you will, but you're also a super geek. Yeah, I have, I have focus issues. So, so you like span one side of the spectrum, I span the other. And I think the show is about the space kind of in the middle. Meeting somewhere Fuck in the it. middle. You know what? This isn't about tech. This is about what you can do with your technology. It's your DIY. Toys. This show is going to be more DIY than you guys have seen before. Oh, yes. And matter of fact, the other thing we want to do is we want to actually involve the viewers in the show. We want to bring you into the show and you're actually gonna help people make better video. Later yeah, on later show. on in the show, you guys are gonna see something really cool. It's basically three tips to make your videos just spot on so that maybe eventually, hopefully, your videos will make it to air. Hopefully you're out there and you're inspired <laughs> and you create stuff and you send it to it. Your tips, your tricks, your ideas, we wanna hear from you. We also actually, uh, we've got a, our first project of Doom. Uh, what I, is this? Well, it's not a man purse. It's such a fanny pack. It, well, it's actually Patrick this, Norton has a fanny pack. This is Max Expedition. It's not a. Bag. It's no. It's a. It's like a shoulder bag. It's so scary. It's more of a man bag. Well, okay. The important part is what's inside of this. Where's the power, Patrick? Uh, the power is actually inside of this. This contains a 12 volt battery, a sealed 12 volt battery. Okay. And if you've got a uh, cigarette, uh, oops, excuse me, a car power adapter. If you've got a car power adapter for your devices, you'll actually be able to charge it off it of this thing. It almost looks like a water. Like it does look like a water bucket. Like just we'll show you later on. This is, there's this crazy store in our building, uh, and it's all basically it's all ex army and marine guys that that wanted better gear when they were. And in you're going to show me how to power up my iPod for like 18 hours. iPod on. computers. <laughs> Actually, the reason I probably originally put the project together was like uh -huh. camcorders, and uh -huh. then we're doing crazy Wi-Fi stuff. Great. So we get into our first product review. Let's do it. This is not the Voodoo. This is actually Voodoo. It's a Voodoo box from Voodoo. It's a standalone movie box. And we've seen a lot of these movie boxes, but what Too makes many. this different? Well, basically, the, the biggest thing about this is it doesn't require a computer. It does require a network connection. If you look at the back, we've got you know HDMI. It's designed to work with a standard deaf television. You see your S video, your component video, your, excuse me, composite, component video, uh, digital output for your home theater system, HDMI, Ethernet. Basically, this box plugs into your network, Ethernet, no wireless, and connects to Voodoo's servers, Voodoo's mothership somewhere out on the Internet. And they give you movies. And, and just so you guys know, Patrick says that this is a plug and play operation. It's one of the least painful setups I've ever had. Uh -huh. uh, and one of the nice things about it is you're, you're not, you're, it's not like I have to set up an iTunes account. I don't have to set up Cinema Now or Movie Link with my Windows Media Center extender on my Vista machine. It's basically a standalone box. There's a price you pay for that. We'll talk about that later. Uh -huh. But it's, they, they basically did a lot of smart things. You don't, you know, basically HDTV, standard definition television, you're golden. Mm -hmm. So you, know, you need, actually, there's one important thing, bandwidth. You need a big honking connection. But it's gonna, it's gonna assess it as soon as you plug it in. One of the first things it does is basically, it'll actually test your service quality. Uh, and if you have less than two megabits per second, the stream available, it's basically going to be like, we don't really want you to use our product. However, I had 1.7 megabits, which is a little bit less than they want, and it worked absolutely fine. So we're looking right here. The control's pretty wild. They basically designed it off of a sort of uh, yeah, surgical control unit. So it's designed to fall into your hand. You've got a scroll wheel that comes through here. If I want to go into find movies, search by title, pick a title. Maybe we'll get lucky. Um, Van Helsing. Van Helsing. <laughs> You're cheating. So we go into Van, and basically you scroll along here, you click to enter a letter. It's pretty obvious stuff, and we go into our space. See, this part I don't like so much, but the rest of the scroll wheel and, and the remote, I, I, I dig. I gotta be honest with you, it's a lot easier to use than, say, the you know typing on a PSP. So do you want to rent it? 
Um, sure, let's run it. It's so painful. So we hit renting. This is such a bad movie. The, the, the transaction system, yeah, don't ever rent this. It's such a waste <laughs> of money. The transaction system actually isn't running. This is a beta version. Uh -huh. Otherwise, I'd be charged like $300 because you buy the box and then you get charged. Well, I've, I've, I've watched like 60 movies on this in the last couple of weeks. Okay. So basically, you pay like you know, $299, $399. You get 24 hours access to the movie mm -hmm. after you start playing it. Basically, See, it sounds so good so far. It's actually pretty good so far. <gasps> Uh-oh. <laughs> Maybe they finally got it running. <laughs> well, we'll go to it. That's a first one. I think you hit your limit. Either that or they're <laughs> updating the servers or something. This, is, this actually launches October 1st. Well, let's go to one that I know I actually have on here. This is one I downloaded especially for you. You were very excited about it. Oh, this one. You love this movie. I just movie. think he has really good abdominals. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see them in high def. There, well, you're almost going to see them in high def. I was kind of interesting about this. It's a lot of the stuff here is like 480p, so it's very, it's basically a, a digital version of a DVD. Or basically, it's a, it's an online version of a DVD. So it's 480p. Mm -hmm. um, so if you've got like a 1080i television, it's not going to look that much better in a lot of cases than a DVD on an upscaling DVD player. Mm -hmm. In some cases, the folks at Voodoo say that they're working hard to get higher resolution versions in there. It'll mm -hmm. handle 720p. It'll handle 1080i. Just not a lot of content at those higher reses there. And what's crazy though is it's, it really does. If you don't sort of trim back the bandwidth, there's a setting on there that allows you to sort of tone back the amount of bandwidth it uses. Mm -hmm. It will slow down everybody working on the computer in your house if right. they're on the internet. You and, gotta watch this. Yeah, my wife was like, what are you doing? I'm like, we're watching a movie. She's like, I can't get onto the boards. And I'm right. like, okay, Sucks so it. it will, you know, basically if there's a whole bunch of people sharing uh, uh, sharing your, you know, if you've got a bunch of kids online or your roommates or whatever, you may want to sort of dial back the settings on that. The video quality looks pretty good. If you have a big 1080p TV, this is just like watching a scaled up DVD. You're gonna see all the flaws in there. Moving forward though, they should have higher resolution on the content. Um, and it basically, I mean, some of this is pre-cached, and if we take a look at that, this actually in the, I think about 30 minutes ago we started downloading this, and it's completely downloaded. See, that's so much better. I reviewed it a unit like a year ago, and it took two and a half hours. Yeah. So, I mean, at least the times are getting faster. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, you know, there's, it's still in beta. It doesn't launch until October 1st, so we're yeah. not going to really know, you know, what happens when it hits the real world until mm -hmm. it does. But what the folks at Voodoo are trying to do is have a huge pipeline at their end and to make sure their customers have a really fast connection at this end. Mm -hmm. um, standalone. No computer networks required. We like that. Love that. Um, the interface is pretty easy to use. I think the, the text entry gets a little bit easier once you've played around, but the control is excellent mm -hmm. one, you know. Um, and the video quality is pretty good so far. I want to see more high def content, like true high def content on there. 720p, 1080i, 1080p. Right. I think it's a good step. It's a good step. In direction, yeah. Now, speaking of steps, right. it's going to be a step on your credit card. $399 for the box. Okay. Plus anywhere between ninety nine cents and like six ninety nine for movies. I think most of them are two ninety nine or three ninety nine. Uh -huh. Some of them are available for purchase only, not rent. So it's sort of a mix and, and match. One of the things that we didn't show that I should have showed you is is there's a huge array of movies on here, and I was actually pleasantly shocked with just how broad the the settings were. Let's so randomly go into drama. They've got stuff from the forties, the thirties. There's some. Um, early uh, pre, you know, basically like uh, silent films on here, and it's actually kind of shocking uh, how many recent titles they have. So that's pretty good. They're they're basically trying to get new movies on here as the DVDs are released. Um, but 19.99 to buy in most cases, some 99 to buy. They're stored locally as a hard drive on the machine. How big? How big? 160 gigabytes, I think. Well, what's kind of cool is something I didn't show you. There's a USB uh, okay, so you can button plug in the back, so you just external. throw an extra. Nice. Yeah. Nice and, nice. you know, unless you start buying a lot of movies, it doesn't really matter how much local storage is. Uh, once you rent a movie, it's available for 30 days. Once you start watching a movie, if you rent it, it's available for 24 hours. That can be frustrating if you start watching it seven and stop. If you don't get home in time the next day, it's gone. you got to right. rent it again. Um, it's going to add up if you're not careful, mm -hmm. you know, because, like, you know, two to four bucks per movie. Mm -hmm. There's no monthly fee, but you're getting charged per movie, and you're getting charged 400 bucks for the device itself. Right. That's the biggest downside for me is the price. The price. The price. And I still don't even think that it's a total deal breaker. I would check it out if I have a little bit of extra cash. It's got potential. If they get like 720p, 1080p movies on this, I think it would be awesome. Totally. Totally. Nice. All right. Nice work there, P. What's coming up next? Coming up, I'm going to show all you aspiring cinematographers three ways to make better video. 
But first, check out dnsstuff.com, an outstanding collection of tools for sysadmins, webmasters, and just about anybody who uses the web often. The most popular tool is the DNS report, where you can type in a URL and get a slew of information about it and the associated DNS servers. There are lots more tools for domains, IP and host names, and tons of other useful stuff. So check it out. Heavy users will need to join for 36 bucks a year, otherwise it cuts you off after a set number of searches. Also sponsoring our first episode of Techzilla is Netflix. If you like high def, you can now get both HD DVD and Blu-ray movies and shows. Get a free trial out of them by signing up through a site they set up just for us. It's www.netflix.com slash Techzilla. A big part of our show is interactivity, and we really want to start getting videos from you guys. So the next few minutes are very important. Pay attention. So you should know by now that you have to strive in life to be a success, even when it comes to shooting video. And the internet is just begging for all of us to share our visions with the world. But how much more bad video can we take? Or can we make? And I'm sick of it. And that's why I'm going to share three tips on how to improve your video and improve our eyeballs in the process. It is all about the best light, and the best time to shoot is in the morning or in the late afternoon when that light doesn't cast those ugly shadows on your subjects. Nuh-uh, no good. See how icky this looks? Ah yes, light, glorious light. And whatever you do, don't make them squint. Now that's the ticket. Are you getting the hang of it yet? So a tripod, or sticks as the pros like to call them, they're gonna be your new best friend. They're gonna give you a super steady shot and free up your hands so that you can do a pan, tilt, or a zoom. So reminder, a pan, a tilt, and a zoom. And you can even jump in front of the camera. Like that. See? No hands. So no tripod and no money for a fancy shoulder rig? Not a problem. Try this. So using the fold-out screen, hold the camera in both hands and put it on your belly. It looks totally silly, but now you have a really steady shot. If you won't be caught dead doing that move, you can always try leaning up against the wall or a tree, a pole, or even a perfect stranger. So if all else fails, you're going to try this nifty little trick. You're going to sit your butt down on the ground, prop your elbows on top of your knees, and voila, instant human tripod. Make sure to use the entire area in your viewfinder so that you fill the frame with picture. Think of it like a tic-tac-toe board, and where the lines intersect, that's where you frame your shot. Try to avoid putting all the good stuff smack dab in the center of the screen. This leaves all the surrounding area just looking sad and lonely. So now it is your turn to get out there and banish all the shaky ass, poorly lit, badly framed video from the planet. We're counting on you. Okay, how did you miss You're Hollywood? Me. Yes, You're I am. You're mocking me at it, this point. There is no sunshine between you know oh May God. and October. I in this had town. to pull out the full-blown grandma slash rock star glasses today because it was so bright you out there. Like Mary Kay and I had, to, I had, I know it's in my, but add hundred pounds to me. But I mean, you look like you know a human in that stick figure. Exactly, but I mean. It was so bright out there. We didn't want to have like the bad video faux pas that we were saying before, like the squinting, like I'm saying in the script, don't squint. Now I'm out there and I'm like, <laughs> so default to the glasses. It's a good thing. I understand. The, uh, I got to ask one question though. The, yeah. What was that yoga? It, it was sort of a... That was the human tripod. 
The human pose. tripod. Human tripod pose. It's like yeah, an inverse I don't know. scorpion. I don't know exactly. I definitely think that you will be more of the the belly steady cam guy, right? What a, yeah, one of you the guys like that. one of the guys that you I like used to that shoot move. with taught me how to do that. And it's amazing. It's just a really good way to, to keep Do the people look at steady. you weird when you're doing that? People always look at me weird so when you're I have a video used camera. to it. Yeah. Right. So we were we, that was another yeah. option. The human tripod is a new another option for the people that don't want people staring was at it them. Was it comfortable? You know, it's like sitting on your butt with your elbows on your knees. I think it's a great option for like moms that are taping their kids at soccer. Okay. So it's, it's comfortable for a longer stretch. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Anyway, so Patrick, I have a feeling it's time for free software segment. <laughs> you just want to. <laughs> How bad do you want to get away from whatever that position was? Well, <laughs> Memtest 86. I'm just going to look at it. Right say, from that position to this, which isn't the most attractive thing either. This actually, this again, is, is quite intimidating for me to look at. I'm terribly sorry. This is not meant to be intimidating. This is actually a really cool piece of free software. The website is memtest.org, M-E-M-T-E-S-T.org. Mm -hmm. It's fun to say .org. And the program is actually called Memtest 86 Plus. Okay. And what it does is... Basically, sometimes you build a system or you upgrade the memory on your computer mm -hmm. and it just randomly starts crashing, misbehaving. Mm -hmm. Mine, just, yeah, I'll tell you what, mine's doing that recently. Did so you, I, did you upgrade gonna... your memory recently? No, I feel like I should though. Well, you know, it's it, one of the things that, that this is something I've started running whenever a computer starts behaving erratically. Yeah. And what it does is you create a boot disk, mm -hmm. um, you burn an ISO to a boot disk, and we can talk about how to do that in another show. Okay. You put it in there and basically you start it off of the boot disk, right? So you've got a live CD in there mm -hmm. and it runs, all it does is run this application, Mentest 86, um, writes, basically does a series of writes to every single you know, area on mm -hmm. the memory on your computer mm -hmm. and then reads it back and compares what it should be reading versus what actually shows up in the memory. And by doing a series of tests over and over again across all the little corners of your memory, it detects if there's errors being produced in the memory of your computer. Um, I've actually used this on three different machines to catch stuff where we couldn't figure out, you know, we reinstalled the operating system, you know, we checked the motherboard settings, we did all the upgrades, nothing fixed it, and then we ran this and it went, oh, your memory's <laughs> Sorry, I just noticed that. It does an STD test, too. Yes. Well, that would be the standard test. Okay, got yeah. it, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> uh, when you're talking about computer syphilis, you're usually running antivirus or anti-spyware. Got it. That's a, a whole other show in there. But you can see, right, got this it. has been running um, for three, like three and a half hours. It's only 48% done. Okay. 49% um, done on this pass. So 30% of testing. It takes a long time to run. Evidently. Yeah, well, we've got a, you know, it's, it's, it's a really nice tool to solve really hard to so find problems. So let's say, has it found a problem yet? Like, no. No. If, if it had found a problem, there'd be like, usually when, when I find it finds a problem, it finds a lot of problems and there's a string of information bleeding across the page. Okay. And the, if you go to memtest.org, download it, there's more instructions on how to use it to test okay. your equipment, but it's really easy. Burn the ISO, boot off the disk, hit go, and it's just gonna run until it finds problems or it completes a test and goes, there wasn't a problem which is my favorite answer, because I hate buying new memory. Problem solver Patrick, people. Problem solver Patrick. Up next, we talked to Garnet Lee about this week's big game release, Halo 3. But first, one word, lol pat. Welcome back to Techzilla. So OneUp.com's managing editor, Garnet Lee, is here to talk about one of the most anticipated game releases of the year, Halo 3. Patrick? Welcome to Techzilla. Garnet, it's good to see you again, man. Hey, man. Good to see the new digs. It's, uh, it's, it's slowly evolving. Do you like the wall? I, I love the wall. Actually, I love the uh, poker table better. You got a, you got a spread? You got a deal? Uh, a little bit later. First, we got to talk about Halo 3. All right, let's talk about it. So Halo 1, Halo 2, 14.5 million copies. Uh, it's the premier title, both on the Xbox, the Xbox 360. I mean, it's the backbone of their sales, right? If they did not have Xbox, if they didn't have Halo for Xbox, where would we be? We might even not even have another 360. <laughs> or they might be done for that matter. That'd be kind of scary. But so, why, why is Halo so huge? Why does it work? I think it really clicks with the Western audience. You know, I think we think about video games a lot of times in terms of a Japanese product that came to America, but Halo is absolutely like a Western thing. It's this guy. Big guns, death and mayhem. Right, I mean, you're this guy in this power armor and you're a badass and you're gonna save the world. You're a space marine. 
How well does that connect? Every summer you see blockbuster action movies sure. like that. Um, that's what this series is. So it, it, it works. So it hits the streets this week. It's like, what, 10,000 stores open on midnight Monday this week? Dude, 10,000 stores. Go to 7-Eleven. You can go to 7-Eleven, Slurpee, Big Gulp. Oh, and can I have a copy of that Halo 3, please? That's scary. It is kind of weird, isn't it? Well, and then, then the promotional stuff. There's like millions of dollars. I think like Mountain Dew spent like what, oh, $42 billion on this or something. you're not so tired of that ad already. Come on. Mountain Dew Game Fuel with Halo 3. That's really frightening. It's, it's one of the more uh, odd product placements. Well, not odd, but I mean, it's really annoying, right? Well, it drives you crazy. Odd would be the Spartan 3 helmet edition. That like is 70 odd. bucks. What did you call it? The we call it the cat helmet around the <laughs> office, but we it's found a little out. tiny master teeth helmet. Well, it's not that small. What we found out when we got it is that that would be a big cat if you're going to put it on a head. I mean, actually, not that I haven't seen. I mean, you have that friend who has that cat, right? That's the like 400 pound cat, right? So, as usual, but this is like completely out of control. I mean, Microsoft's like, we're competing with Spider Man 3 for the biggest opening ever, and you're like, well, it is out of game. control. It is out of control, and Microsoft really manages this product in a far superior way to anything else that they sell. I mean, can you imagine if they sold Zune as well as they sold Halo? No really, comments. can you imagine that? We could also say that Halo is a much better product than the Zune. But it wasn't when it first came out. I mean, okay. keep in mind, when the Xbox first launched, it was an unproven piece of hardware, and right. Halo did not come out of the gates as strong as it built to be. Okay. So, you know, marketing, product, all those things come together. Speaking of like building it up, 10 out of 10. One Up gave Halo 10 out of 10 on review. Was this is like the third game in history to get a 10 out of 10? Well, so let me tell you, I mean, real quickly, the way we review games is not, I mean, you, you gotta have games that get 10s for them to mean sure. anything. It can't just be this crazy ideal. So what that means is that this is a superlative game. It's a great game. It's a game that you absolutely have to go out and get for yourself. Okay. It doesn't mean it's perfect by any stretch. Okay. You know, I mean, I think that speaks to like why Shu, who, by the way, Shu is one of the premier Halo guys in the journalism business. I mean, he lives and breathes Halo. He plays it online. He plays it single player. Point, Dan Shu is the... He's the EIC and actually now the editorial director for Ziff Davis uh, Game Group. So, so he's the know, man. He's the man. He knows his stuff and if he says it's that good then you can you can pretty much count that it's going to be rewarding. But he said like you know there's no big oh wow gameplay moments in it. Is it just that evolutionary over Halo 2? Well, you know, I mean, this is part of what we're getting to in this, like, we're calling it now, like, the HD era of gaming, right? right? Because now we have games where they can communicate digital actors and have really compelling stories. Because the screens are beautiful. The gameplay looks gorgeous. Or is that me? Because I'm not playing a lot of games I think you're going to see more beautiful games this fall, both mm -hmm. on the 360 and on the PS3. That's not to say this isn't a pretty game. And actually, what they're doing is more elegant. They're very restrained with what they do. They use uh, the, the HDR, the high dynamic range lighting, mm -hmm. to get a lot of good effect between going in shadow and going out into the light. They have nice detailed uh, textures. Doom 3 did that. You went from the light into the black, oh, right? Please don't pull Doom 3 into this. <laughs> sorry, please. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I mean, if, if Halo 3 story is here, then, you know, Doom, okay, Doom down here, right? So we're talking about the graphics. We're talking about the graphics, and they are very pretty, but you're going to see prettier games. I mean, even if you just go and look at right now, like a game like Bioshock, much more atmospheric, mm -hmm. draws you into the environment more, it has more polished touches, and it has those moments. Okay, so it sounds like this is a perfect moment to say, is that because Halo is not a, you know, Halo 3, it's a multiplayer game. It's an excuse for a battle. Let's not just call it a multiplayer game, but let's, let's definitely point out that, ma that multiplayer is a big part of the okay. package. I mean, that's a core piece of what's made it so popular. And you could easily argue that the Halo got to be so big from people getting together and playing it together. And keep in mind, the original game right. didn't have online play, so you had really groups of friends, myself included, and you'd <laughs> yeah. land... Carrying the Xbox. In LAN parties. Right. And LAN party was, up to that point, really a PC thing, right? But here you had groups of guys getting together with televisions and hubs and cables and playing Halo. Which brings us to Forge. Yeah, Forge is... Forge is what I hope is going to actually really extend this game a long way. So we've had in the PC world this idea of map editors, right. where you could build maps and it extends the life forever, right? It's never caught on in consoles because it takes a lot of work to build a map. You have to understand geometry and how right. to make good stuff. It's right? hard. It means it takes it's hard. You have to be aesthetically talented and to make it work. And it's a big time commitment. Right. Forge makes it much more simple. Forge takes these maps that uh -huh. are multiplayer maps and lets you play with all the stuff in it and, and you know, like a Lego kit, like, Okay, I have three guns here. Well, I don't really want a gun here. I want this gun to spawn over here. I want this gun to spawn over here. I want people to start here. So you It'll, take a comfortable level and make it completely new and uncomfortable yeah, by moving stuff around. Absolute flexibility in what you can do with it. So you combine this ability to move everything in the level around and custom game modes, and suddenly you can start thinking creatively and go, well, you know what? 
let's play dodgeball in Halo. Let's have everybody <laughs> spawn over here on one team, everybody spawn over here on another team, and we'll put you know a couple weapons in the middle and let them race for it. I like it. What's what's campaign scoring? Uh, campaign scoring, there's this the meta. The co-op play, I guess. So co-op is a big part of the game. I think you're going to enjoy co-op a lot because if you're playing a single-player campaign and you've played a lot of Halo before, I think you're going to find normal. Maybe a little too easy for you. You're going to get through it really quickly. There's two other difficulties above that. If you want to make that jump to those higher levels, you're going to need to play with your friends. And when you do that in co-op, mm -hmm. you're going to be able to do that online. And you're going to be able to compete with each other to see who can score the most in this meta game where you'll be scored on how well you play. We got to scoot. What's your favorite thing overall in Halo 3? Oh my gosh, dude, that's a hard question. But online, co-op, multiplayer, because playing with your friends is more fun than playing by yourself. Garnet, thank you so much. Absolutely. We're going to toss it back to Jessica. If you want more on Halo 3, we've got interviews at 1up.com, links to Garnet's blog. And you know what? We even got some places you can find us some tips and tricks so you don't get absolutely slaughtered the first time you fire the game up. Coming up, we're going to show you how to build a portable battery pack for anything you can plug into a car power socket. It's a lot heavier than the cool guy lithium ion pack he used to have, but this cost him 400 bucks less. Have you ever wondered how many people are born every day, every week, every year? Well, check out this trippy world stats counter. It's a site where you can watch statistical figures for pretty much everything from world population, births, deaths, deforestation, even computers being produced. You can choose to view the counters by year, month, week, day, or the present moment and watch it increase right before your eyes. A big thanks to GoDaddy.com for reaching out to sponsor the very first episode of Techzilla. If you want to make an impact online, do it with GoDaddy.com. .com names for as low as $1.99 plus world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and much more. Plus, entering code TECH5. That's code TEK5 when you check out. Save an additional $10 off any order of $40 or more. Okay, so what is this thing? Because <laughs> Ow! It definitely isn't like my fanny pack. No, it's not. It's, it's actually some weird piece of tactical battle gear from the... the this, I'll, we'll tell you Tad downstairs. We'll talk about it in another episode. Um, it's portable power supply. Portable power supply. It's portable power supply. You ever find yourself in the middle of nowhere and need to run a computer? Probably not. That's the facial expression. <laughs> Isn't there a car? Don't you travel by car? I definitely travel by car. Okay. Yeah. I, I usually but do. I, I, yeah, I might not be as attached to my PC then. We, were, we started playing around with, with uh, two things kind of came to mind. One, we're doing remote shoots where you had yep. to hike in yep. uh, to shoot like desert races. Yes. And you either spend hundreds of dollars on camera batteries or you figure out another way to bring power along with you because you can't take your car so this back This is there. why you're so stoked about your man This bag. is why I'm so stoked about it. <laughs> now <laughs> I'm understanding. It's not just a man bag, it's a portable source of energy, Jessica. That's right. Heather. Well, let me, let me open this thing up real quick. We found, we, <laughs> if I'm going to be mocked, I'm taking total credit for this. <laughs> I, I found 12-volt uh, batteries. These are designed to power home alarm systems, about the size of a motorcycle battery. And it's a sealed battery. The case, the man purse, just a way to carry it around. Got this it. is the important part. It's a 12-volt, uh, 12-amp-hour 12 battery, okay. which basically we've wired it up. Check this out. We've wired it up to a... Uh, lighter socket, just uh -huh. basic car power socket adapter. And we put that inside the case, the little fancy man bag, just to make it easier to carry. The mm -hmm. whole point of this is I used to have an amazing portable battery back when notebooks had like an hour and a half battery life. Yep. Um, I picked up a power pack from a company called Electrovia. And it's a flat, like two and a half pound lithium ion battery. And I was able to get 10 to 12 hours of battery life from it back when computers rarely had more than two hours of battery life. Mm -hmm. Love the idea of having basically a big honking battery that allows me to run you know, camcorders, you could, you know, charge your iPhone, your, you know, the, the perfect place when you're trapped. You ever been trapped on like an 18 hour flight to Japan? No, South Africa once though. There you go. Yes. You know, that, you know, you're like the iPods run out, the computers run out, you've read every magazine, all three novels, yes. and you're staring at yes. counting little spots in the ceiling. Well, the idea, you know, I don't know, technically this, you should be able to take this on a plane because it's a sealed battery and it has the whole non-spillable logo on that. Isn't that exciting? It's not spillable. So the idea is that this won't, you know, burn everyone in the cabin if it falls out of the That's luggage a department. <laughs> it's a big perk. Um, I don't know if I'm going to try it with my luck with the, the, uh, Transportation Safety Authority, but basically it's a 12 volt battery, $40, seven bucks for the power adapter, and I've sort of recreated a somewhat heavier, it's like nine pounds instead of two and a half pounds, um, for uh, 144 uh, watt hours of power, which is a lot of power. That's a lot more powerful than my battery, like three times the power of the battery inside my MacBook Pro. Um, a whole lot more power that's inside of the iPod. So basically it's a way for me to charge devices or run them directly when I'm in the middle of nowhere. Because it's hard to carry a generator around. No, and you do. You purposely stick yourself in the middle of nowhere often. <laughs> yeah. And so this, this I understand <laughs> this why you are so excited about this now. 
And you know what? There's even a smaller version. I worked on another Inside version. Inside your makeup case. Inside this my makeup so case. <laughs> hey, this is from Maxpedition, the hard use gear. <laughs> it's such a manly shop down there. But this one is actually, a few, you know, I actually, uh, the idea is, you know, something like this, where you've got like a little two AA batteries inside this Energizer box for 20 bucks. Right. Well, this is going to give you uh, two and a half times the power of these two batteries. Now, obviously, it's heavy, but right. if you have a giant backpack and you're uh -huh. running around a trade show, something like that's not going to kill it's you. It's not. It's totally not. And it's going to keep your cell phone running for pretty much the entire length of the trade show without resorting to 42 rechargeable batteries. Uh -huh. It's an idea. You're not, you're you're just not with me on this. You think no, I'm no, 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 no. <laughs> I I actually totally get it. Right. And if I ever need to make sure that I have power somewhere, I now know what to do. And that's why I'm stoked about just being in your presence, Patrick, because I have you admit, give though. me ideas. <laughs> so I would probably take this somewhere in the middle of the desert if I was there. But yep. I definitely I don't think I would take this. That's understand. That's a heavy battery. And the truth is, look, if you've got the money. It's a heavy battery. It's a heavy. That was an ominous thud. Yeah. Okay. There's no cracks in the bar. It was yep. kind of scary. The uh, you look. If you got the money, get a lithium ion battery. I'm actually trying to find a good source of lithium ion cell so I can take. You know, I'd like to have like four times as much power for half as much weight. That would be awesome. But I you know agree. What? You're gonna spend a lot more money. It's like yeah. you know less than sixty dollars in parts in this, including the charger. Yep. You know, like forty dollars in parts in this. So this is a cheap way to to bolt this together. And trust me, I get it. I, I know. But my my father would just kill me if you're... I if I put myself out of touch with it, you know anything. That's why <laughs> I would probably never do that. Well, yeah. I mean, not a lot of people are running around with you know sealed rechargeable lead acid batteries in their backpacks because it's weird, which fits me to a T. I think we're out of show. I think that's it. Are we done? I think we're done. Are we doing it again next week? We're absolutely going to do it again next and week. And we need some help from you when we do it again next week. We need you to kick in, to chime in, to shout, to hail from the distance. We got the forums. We do. I mean, it, this show just feels slightly incomplete because we're saying it's about you, and it absolutely is. So we want to see <laughs> we talk you the entire time. participating in the you. forums. We want you emailing us. Patrick, what's the email? Uh, Techzilla at revision3.com. Forums are up, revision3.com forward slash forum. Yep. I like saying forward slash, even forward though technically slash. it's just a slash. slash. I'm sure someone will scold me about that, either in email or in the forums. Uh, if you want to email Jessica, just put Jessica only in, in the, the subject, subject line. line. Except for the filthy perverts out there, in which case, keep it to yourself or just go find local I might find Patrick alternative. on you. <laughs> yeah. You do not want this man at your doorstep. We have DNS stuff. He comes stuff, fully equipped and with we can batteries. Use the abuse tools. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hurl a battery oh, at yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I did. I Certainly enjoyed I you, did. my friend. Well, thank you very much. Way to be. One more people, actually a whole bunch of people we got to thank. Joey, who shot this and put together the set. David and Heather, who built it. Heather, who's been working with me to produce the show, who hasn't quit yet, which is a strong sign of her moral purpose and character, <laughs> or a desperate need for a paycheck. I'll take either one. <laughs> if you don't like the show, tell us what you want to fix. If you do like the show, tell us what you want us to keep doing. Email us. You've got it. Techzilla at revision3.com. I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Jessica Corbin. And see you guys next week. What's coming up next? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> A big part of our show is interactivity. So the next... <laughs> coming up, I'm going to show you how... Not me. <laughs> Definitely not me. Can I use I, you for a second? You can use me for okay, a second. You need to lift you up. No. <laughs> how about lion face? Give me lion face. What's that? Ah! <laughs> Lemon face. <laughs> <laughs> we want better movies. We don't, you know, you, you, great. New, you've come up with a uh, son of a bitch. Sorry.